I should probably look up the notes of this video before I start. That that would have been a smart thing to do. Never said I was smart. Actually, I did. It was a huge part of my identity as a child. Anyway, welcome back to Dead Good Book Reviews. I'm Judith, and today I am bringing you, finally bringing you, a review for one of my most anticipated books of 2021, Becky Chambers' A Psalm for the Wild Built. As you will know, if you've been watching for a while, I'm a huge Becky Chambers fan, big fan of the Wayfarer series, absolutely love it. As soon as I heard this was going to be available, I pre-ordered it, and then... I waited quite a long time for it to actually arrive. I'll be honest. Um, the, as you will know, if you are on Bookish Internet, there are some supply chain issues. I don't blame anyone for this. It's hard enough to get novellas in the UK anyway. Let's just be excited that it's finally here. This copy of this book I bought myself, but I did also have a free digital review copy from the publisher. Nobody's paying me to talk about books, all opinions are my own. I am also going to keep this as spoiler free as humanly possible. However, obviously this is a very short novella. If you do want to go in knowing absolutely nothing, please do pause this video, click away, come back when you've read it and we'll talk about it then. I wrote these notes before all of the pushbacks and stuff and I've written, this book came out in the UK on the 1st of August, <laughs> which is a weird release date since that was a Sunday, so I wonder if it was actually that. It didn't come out on the 1st of August, it was meant to come out on the 8th of August and then it didn't. But that's by the by, it came out this year. It is a novella and is the first book in the Monk and Robot series, which I believe is a two novella series. This is a solar punk novella, which I had to look up, and according to my very detailed research, definitely not just Wikipedia, it is fiction, which includes novels, short stories, and poetry, which imagines futures that address environmental concerns with varying degrees of optimism. There you go. Normally I put in an about the author here. I've talked about Becky Chambers heaps on this channel. I have at least two, maybe three other Becky Chambers reviews up. She's one of my favourite authors and if you want to hear more about why that is you can click the little card and you will get a Becky Chambers playlist. I am going to veer from tradition. Sometimes I write my own blurbs for the books for these re reviews. I'm just going to read you the one from the book today because I don't know how much I want to reveal. It's been centuries since the robots of Panga gained self-awareness and laid down their tools. Centuries since they wandered en masse into the wilderness never to be seen again. Centuries since they faded into myth and urban legend. One day, the life of a tea monk is upended by the arrival of a robot there to honour the old promises of checking in. The robot has one question. What do people need? But the answer to that question depends on who you ask and how. They're going to need to ask it a lot. This is a solo punk novella. As I said, there's varying degrees of optimism. This is a very hopeful book. I think a lot of futures where we do not have robots or where we do not have technology or something's gone terribly, you know, awry from where we would expect it to go, opposite of the direction of everything is robotic, tend to be very miserable, because obviously we do get a lot out of technology, but this book really looks at that as a positive, and this book looks at a world where we might function and thrive without robots. Becky Chambers' work is almost always incredibly hopeful, and all about kind of human connectedness or other species connectedness, and I think that this was really something I needed when I read this. I was reading a lot of very miserable stuff. I was feeling very, very down about, you know, everything. And yeah, it's nice to read a book that really takes a what if things went well approach and what if we did the right things instead of, you know, what we do currently, which is ignore the problem and hope it goes away and that someone will suddenly invent something that will fix all of the problems and mean we can still drive our cars and do all of the things. It's fine. I love the amount of detail you get as well. This is not a long novella, it's very short, so you pick up a lot through the context clues, which is one of my favourite things about novella world building is you just sort of have to build your own picture of stuff from the tiny clues you get given. And that's a really interesting society and really interesting technology, I say in inverted commas, because obviously technology can mean a lot of things. Our main character Dex is non-binary, hooray, wonderful, yay, non-binary representation in books. Wasn't a surprise coming from Becky Chambers and I trust Becky Chambers to do it well. Obviously I can't speak to how good or bad that representation is, but I haven't heard anything hugely negative about this and as I say, Becky Chambers has done this in other works before, I trust her to do the research and to do it justice. I really love the robot too, but I'm going to stick on Dex for a little bit. Um, I actually don't think you get a huge amount from them as a character in terms of their complete life, their background, their personality, their whatever, whatever. You don't get heaps and heaps, which is fair enough. Again, it's a very short story. And I think that what I like about that is you can really project yourself into it. Now, obviously I'm not a non-binary individual, but you can kind of put a lot of yourself into that character, which I think for this story and the ideas and themes that it's exploring is a really interesting thing to be able to do. And that's because I think this is a really wonderful, hopeful book for people in their late twenties, to mid thirties who are figuring it out. And maybe you're in your early twenties and you're figuring it out as well. And you just need somebody to be like, it's okay. You're allowed to change your mind about what you want to do. And you're allowed to think you found what you want to do and then find that not fulfilling. And you're allowed to not seek fulfillment 
in everything that you do. And that, that's just some advice that I really needed. So I would say if that's the kind of message you're looking for, if you're sort of struggling to find a bit of purpose, have a good question about what purpose is and what do we need and what, what do we want and what's, what is completeness and what is that feeling and do we do we need to be seeking it all the time yeah I thought it was interesting and that's something that I've been thinking about more broadly in what I consume generally and what I try and give myself and I think that this was a good kind of added bonus to that kind of thought process. I want to just do a little touch on novellas and what to expect from them because maybe you're looking at this review and you've not read a novella before and I do think that they are a different beast and should be treated as such. I've read a fair few novellas at this point. There are a number of them, not necessarily on this shelf, but uh, there are a lot of them in my house. And when I initially started reading them, I was not 100% sold. I was like, no, I want more. Give me the whole story. I want all of the detail and all of the world building. And I want to meet 50 different characters and have a wonderful adventure with them. What is this 200 page nonsense? And then as I read more of them, I became more able to say, this was a great novella for me. This one was less good for me. And here's why. And here's what the reasons are. And a lot of it comes down to, I really like an open novella. I like a novella that leaves a lot of threads unfollowed, that you can just project everything else you want to onto the world. You can think about different adventures that might happen in this world, but you're just seeing one little thread of the story. You might not even get the end of that story. That's fine. I just want an event that happens in an interesting place with an interesting person, with an interesting idea, you know? I think if you're not used to that, that can be something quite difficult. I think particularly with Becky Chambers, actually her work makes a lot of sense in novella form because the books in the Wayfarer series, for example, are quite open. They're quite, this is one event. This is one set of people in this experience. There are hundreds of other people in the world. We're following this story. And I think that, that works really well. So if you like Becky Chambers' work, there is a good chance you will like novellas in general. If this is your first novella you're picking up, just bear in mind, you're not going to get a complete beginning, middle, end, bam, 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 done, three act structure kind of thing. Some recommendations if this is something you want to read. I've not read many solar punk novels. I will look that up in a minute and see if I've read any that I didn't register were solar punk, but we'll have a look. I did think about, no, it's not up here. Um, Becky Chambers does have one other novella. It's called To Be Taught If Fortunate, and I have a review video up for that. That will be in the card somewhere. It's a wonderful novella. It's very different from this, but it is a wonderful novella. I also have a whole video that is just novella recommendations. So I'll link that as well because I've made it. Might as well use it um, rather than putting all of them in here. Um, I just have one novella next to me, uh, Pride Women Wanted, which I will always recommend, but um, the rest of them are in that. I was gonna look up solar punk books. Let's do it. Apparently I've looked at it before. Maybe I did this for this video. Ah. Nope, I'm pretty sure I've read none of these, but they all have really nice covers. Oh. Well, if The Quiet at the End of the World counts as one, I have read that, but I don't have many comments on it. All right, let's, let's, that, that seems like a fairly fruitless event. Yes to this book. I had a really great time. I'm very glad that I own it. I'm very glad that I got to have it early so that I didn't have to wait three months for it to arrive. I'm looking forward to book two as well. It's called A Prayer for the Crown Shy, I believe. A Prayer for the Crown Shy, yes. And that was all the information I had when I wrote the notes for this video. There may be more out there now, I do not know. I am certainly going to be buying it. I'm certainly going to be reading it. Becky Chambers is an auto buy author for me excited. Have you read this? Have you also been waiting for your pre-order to come in? Let me know. Are there any other solar punk books I should be looking up? Should I be reading them? I feel like it's something I would enjoy. I like hopeful things, right? Let's see. Tell me those down in the comments below. While you're commenting, if you haven't already, please do subscribe. It makes me feel loved and appreciated. Thank you so much. You can also follow me on social media. Come hang out on Discord where we have wonderful chats about books and share pictures of pets. Yay. <laughs> That's all from me and I will see you in the next one. It's got a piece of bloopers now. I'm gonna pop you up there. Thank you so much for your presence. Panga, panga. In a world without robot, without robots. How good or bad the repu reputation? I think the dog is crying. No, she's fine. Um.